Astronomers and engineers are celebrating another major milestone at Cerro Paranal in Chile, home of the ESO Very Large Telescope Array. Thanks to their dedicated efforts, they have been able to create the first artificial star in the Southern Hemisphere, allowing astronomers to study the universe in the finest detail. With this artificial star, it is now possible to apply the adaptive optics technique almost anywhere in the sky. During the night of the 28th to the 29th of January 2006, a laser beam of 4 watts was launched from Yepun, an 8.2 meter unit telescope of the Very Large Telescope Array, producing an artificial star 90 kilometers up in the atmosphere. This laser guide star has a visual magnitude of 9.3 and is therefore about 20 times fainter than the faintest star that can be seen with the unaided eye. Normally, the achievable image sharpness of a ground-based telescope is limited by the effects of atmospheric turbulence. This drawback can be overcome with adaptive optics, which works by means of a computer-controlled flexible mirror that counteracts the image distortion created by the turbulence of the atmosphere in real time. This allows the telescope to produce images that are as sharp as if taken from space, this means that finer details in astronomical objects can be studied and also that fainter objects can be observed. In order to work, adaptive optics needs a sufficiently bright nearby reference star which limits the area of the sky that can be surveyed. To overcome this limitation, astronomers use a powerful laser that creates a bright artificial reference star where and when they need it. The laser guide star system is about creating an artificial reference star for adaptive optics, so-called laser guide star. Adaptive optics needs a reference star in order to correct for the atmospheric turbulence. So we propagate a laser beam, 50 centimeter in diameter, 589 nanometers wavelength, yellow-orange color, several watts in power, up to 90 kilometer in the Earth mesosphere. This first light is the culmination of five years of cooperation and hard work by a team of scientists and engineers from ESO and the Max Planck Institute in Garching and Heidelberg, Germany. During more than a month of intense work at the observatory, the expert team assembled and installed the laser on the telescope. Finally, they were rewarded by the sight of a beautiful, vivid yellow beam coming out of the 50 centimeter wide launch telescope. The laser is hosted in a dedicated laboratory under the platform of Yepun. The laser shines at a particular wavelength that makes the layer of sodium atoms present at an altitude of 90 kilometers of Earth's atmosphere glow, producing an artificial star. The custom-made fiber carries the high-power laser to the launch telescope situated on top of the large unit telescope. The laser guide star will be used with the two adaptive optics instruments already working at Paranal, the Naus Konica Imager and the Symphony Spectrograph. In just over a week, the team was able to use the artificial star with these instruments, providing astronomers with great expectations of the science to come. The astronomical research on a very large telescope with laser guide star system and adaptive optics will benefit in several different fields. We will be able to observe everywhere in the sky and especially outside our galaxy. So we will be able to observe black holes forming in the uh, bunch of other galaxies, redshift, high redshift galaxies, CFA galaxies. Just to make some examples, there are of course many more. In our own galaxies we will be able to observe the galactic center or the young stellar objects, or the star formation regions. A second phase of commissioning will take place in the spring to optimize the operations before the system is made available to astronomers later this year. The experience gained with this laser guide star is also a key milestone in the design of the next generation of extremely large telescopes in the 30 to 60 meter range that are now being studied by ESO.